Hey, Joey Starr here for another episode of Star Quality Kitchen. Today I will show you one of the ways that you can make Brazilian black beans. I said one of the ways because there are so many ways just to make the base recipe. And then there are so many other variations for black and other kinds of beans. And they range anywhere from just a simple Brazilian bean recipe all the way to more complex dishes like feijoada. To add another dimension to this plethora of bean recipes, each style of beans are also subject to both regional and or family specific versions. So before you go commenting or sending me an email explaining to me that this isn't the way that your Meyer Vogue makes it, just know that they're all correct to somebody or all wrong we ask our own moms. When I was a kid, it was pretty much impossible for my mom to feed me any kind of beans. I didn't care for their texture, aroma, or taste just to begin with. And when I was about five years old, my then babysitter forced me to eat a bowl of American baked beans, which has a very distinct flavor profile that I did not like at all. From that point forward, all and any styles of beans were off the table. Get it? Off the table? See what I did there? When I was a preteen, mom was able to get me to eat her variation of Brazilian beans in small doses. And even then, only if they were liquefied. I may have been a little bit entitled. Then in my mid-teens, I started to open up a little more and slowly began to try other styles of beans, with my favorite being black beans. Beans are a staple in many cultures, particularly in Hispanic and Latin ones, as they are plentiful, affordable, and highly versatile in their applications. While mom did make great bean dishes, she really wasn't a big fan of black beans per se. So typically that was something that I would eat at either at a friend's house or at a restaurant. So to add one more degree of variation to today's recipe, this will be my version of one of the traditional ways of making Brazilian black beans, since I don't really have my own family recipe to draw upon. So if you've been following my previous cooking videos, you might already be sipping on some mache after having made some Brazilian style white rice before I spill the beans on how to make this recipe. <laughs> Come on, you guys know me right now. So here's what we're gonna need for today's recipe. One pound of dried black beans, four medium beets. Now, you might find yourself in a situation like I did where my local market did not have medium-sized beets. So I had to settle for buying a gigantic one like this, which is actually too much. Or you may find yourself in a position where they only have the smaller ones, which would actually be better than what I had to settle for. But the basic idea is that you're gonna need a pound of fresh beets. Canned beets will not do the trick. If all you have available is canned beets, go to a market, maybe a farmer's market, whatever, get something that was picked off the line, not out of a can. Now for the next ingredient, you can take two routes. You can either have some tempero pronto made, there'll be a link in the description box below, it's my recipe for tempero pronto. If you're gonna use tempero pronto, I wouldn't use more than two or three tablespoons. For the sake of those who haven't seen the video on tempero pronto, or haven't made any, or just wanna really just kinda of whip this together quick without making a batch of tempero pronto, you can use two tablespoons of fresh minced garlic, two tablespoons of coarse salt, which we're gonna combine in a little bit to make a special paste specifically for this dish. We'll need two tablespoons of corn oil. Can you use other oils? Sure. Is it gonna come out quite the same way as this? No. You want consistency between how I make it and how you try it. Make it corn oil, please. Three quarter cups of chopped scallions, AKA green onions. Half a cup of fresh cilantro. In addition to having to take an alternate route for my beets, the store where I got my cilantro from didn't have the regular bunch of fresh cilantro for me. They actually, check this out. <laughs> They actually only had it in this plant like this to grow, kind of like you're having your own little home garden. I just happened to prune half a cup's worth. Now, if you find yourself in that similar situation, or even if you're just kind of pruning off the bunch that you bought in your local supermarket, try as much as possible to minimize the amount of stems. Try to make it mostly or completely cilantro leaves. And eight cups of water. You're also gonna need a medium stock pot or any equivalent that you have, something large enough where you can fit all this stuff in. And if if you're going to take the same route that I am, instead of using a tepeto pronto, making our own paste, then it would be a good idea to have a mortar and pestle. But if you don't have a mortar and pestle at home, you can use like a big spoon and a bowl and just kind of crush it. I like having the mortar and pestle because I feel like I'm a little bit closer to how my ancestors made this. So first thing we're going to need to do is you're going to take your fresh beets. We got to scrub this. 
That's right, scrub it. Now in my case, because I had to improvise, I just think this is more than a pound of beet. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to cut this up. That's why I wanna scrub it first before I break the skin. Always it's gonna get really messy because the thing about fresh beets is it's basically a big ball of dye. So I just scrub my beet. Basically what you're looking to do is you wanna gently scrub it. Don't use a steel wool because you don't wanna destroy the skin. You just wanna clear off any excess dirt or any other minerals that are left over when they pulled beets from the garden. In my case, this is why you're kind of better off with the smaller beets or medium beets because you'll be able to just divvy out the right amount. I'm gonna have to cut this up, which basically means that when I use this in the recipe, I'm gonna be adding additional color to the black beans. But the good thing is that because they're black beans, your guests are still not gonna know that there are beets cooked in there unless you tell them or they watch this video. But it's desirable to be able to cook the beets in the beans without breaking the skin. It's still gonna taste great, trust me. All right, so I divvied up my beet and I also cut them into smaller wedges because if I left them kind of intact, they're gonna stand taller in the pot like this as opposed to just like this. And what happens is they're not gonna cook as evenly as they would. Now we're ready to start cooking. Take your pot, we're gonna dump the entire pound of beans, dry beans into the pot. We're gonna drop all the beets into there and stir all the beans into the pot with the dried beans. We wanna add enough water so that it'll cover the beans and the beets and get roughly about half an inch above everything. Eight cups of water should do the trick in my case. Let's put this bad boy on the show. I'm gonna set the heat on high and I have to wait for it to start boiling. You're gonna see it already boiling right about now. Once you have brought this to a boil, you then wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer. Let's turn it down to simmer. And cook it until the beets are tender when pierced with the tip of a knife. This is usually anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes. Every single time I've made it, it's been a solid hour. So sit and relax. You got about a good hour until you're ready for the next step. All right, so it's been an hour. I'm gonna give the beets the old tender test with the knife, applying almost no pressure at all. The knife almost goes through the beets, so I would say they're tender enough. I mean, I can't even pick them up by stabbing them, so I would say they're tender enough. So what you wanna do next now is you wanna remove the beets and what you do with the beets depends on you. If you like beets, you can wait for them to cool down, peel them, and then serve them whatever way you wanna serve them. Let me know in the comments below how you like your beets. In this situation where you've made this and now you have these beets that are no longer required for the remaining of the recipe, what are you gonna do with them? I know some people who don't like beets at all, but they know that the beans will come out best using the beets, so they'll cook with the beets and they'll toss the beets. I personally, I'll probably cut them into like cubes or something like that, and I'll have it as a side dish with my dinner, which perhaps I'll show you that later. But in the meantime, let's remove the beets. Once you remove the beets, you'll wanna let the beans cook for another one to two hours until the beans are tender. When I make this, it takes a good two hours, sometimes a little bit longer than two hours. You'll know about a feel. And then, depending on how you feel, you feel like they're pretty firm still, check again in another 30 minutes. And again, if it feels like it's still really firm, then you know, go to full two hours or start checking every 15, 20 minutes until you feel like it's getting soft enough where you like to eat them. Important point, if the temperature you set on your stove to simmer is a little higher than it needs to be, your water might evaporate a little too fast. So what I like to do is I like to take a kettle of water. I would say that in my case, I know it's gonna take close to two hours. So around the hour and a half mark, I'm gonna check the beans. If it still needs to cook or if it looks like the water is almost completely gone. You don't want to burn these, believe me. As wonderful as these taste, as soon as you start to burn them, they're gonna start not tasting so good. So what I like to do is around the 90 minute mark, I will set my kettle to boil so that I can have some nice hot water, similar to what we did with the rice. Have the water set separately, and when that time comes, when I go to check on it, if they're starting to dry out before they're tender, I'm gonna add the water, usually about half a cup to a cup at a time, mix it up, and then check on it again in 15, 20 minutes. I'll see you in about 90 minutes. So after a couple hours of simmering, you want to check your beans, see how tender they are. And it really kind of depends. Sometimes a couple hours is enough, sometimes you need more time, but you should be able to tell just by pressing down with your spoon how firm the beans are. They should be kind of soft, almost sponge-like. Mine are kind of firm. And if you're not 100% sure, not a big deal. You can just kind of pick up a bean or two, try to chew it. 
Okay, this is still too firm. Depending on the amount of water that's in here, I had already boiled some water in this kettle. And then you just add a little bit in there. It really depends on the firmness. If they're really like tough, I'd say let it simmer for another hour. But if they're starting to soften up and you're not sure, you wanna play it safe every 20 minutes until it reaches the tenderness that you're looking for. So while we're getting close to the beans being tender, what I like to do is as I stir it to check it out, I like to push down on it with the flatter part of the spoon just kind of mash it up a bit. This way you get a little bit of a, almost a soup-like consistency in the beans. Kind of looks like this. At least the way my family would eat it, that's a desired consistency. The likely there's a little less runny, you're not gonna add as much water. I prefer this consistency. If you need yours to be a little bit looser, of course you would add more from here that we can keep it warm. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to the next step where we use these ingredients here that we were talking about before. Right now I'm heating up this saucepan here. While I'm waiting, it's time for us to make our paste. I will drop the link down below in the description box where you can get a set like this on Amazon because I know not all stores carry this. Definitely worth the investment. It doesn't cost much and it's cool as hell. So I'm gonna take Mike and Scarlet, like, pop it in there. And if you're not me, you're not gonna spill any of it onto the counter like I did. And then we're gonna add in our coarse salt and then we're gonna get to some mashing. We're gonna do the mash. Mash that in there. If you're overzealous in your mashing, it's gonna spill down the sides as I just showed you. So just, you know, take it easy, guy. Take your time. So now I have a nice mushy paste here. Medium high heat, we're gonna add our quarter cup of corn oil. And the oil do not compromise. It has to be corn oil, it's gonna taste different. I know some of you are gonna go ahead and use canola or something, and you know what? You're not gonna get the same results. That's on you, not me. Give that a moment to heat up. As soon as you start to hear a little sizzle, it's time to drop in this paste. Swirl that around. You basically want to cook it long enough that the garlic starts to become a bit translucent and any bigger chunks of your salt has dissolved. Don't worry that I'm using the same spoon to stir the beans because it's going into the beans anyway. So it's all going to end up in the same place. And we're going to add our scallions in there. Drop that in there. Take my cilantro, sand stems. Drop that into there. You're gonna kind of stir fry it for about roughly two minutes. Basically, you want to get it to where the cilantro is fully soaked through and that the scallions are starting to become clear. Clean. Once the whiter pieces of the scallions starts to become really shiny, that means it's just about there. You want to be careful too. Now, you want the scallions to clear, but you don't want the garlic to burn because that's gonna affect the taste of this dish. So make sure you're not burning it while you're cooking it enough so that the scallions are tender. And similar to when I was mixing the beans, I'm kind of pushing down with the flat part of the spoon because that's how I'm testing the tenderness of the scallions. Two to four minutes, scallions are soft. Now you're gonna dump this whole thing into your pot of the beans here. This is one of the key parts of making this taste like something that came from a Mediterranean kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up with the beans it's really cool too because your beans become nice and shiny once you mix this in here. Oh yeah. And it brings on such a, an amazing aroma. Like the beans by themselves, they smell pretty good, but once you mix in this mixture with the scallions and the hefogado that we mixed up there, it smells like home. Get that a nice mixture. And once I'm comfortable that it's mixed well enough, I'm going to leave the pot on simmer Give that about five minutes and that's gonna be done. So after five minutes, not only are your beans ready, but hopefully your kitchen smells great. You're ready to start serving it with food. My recommendation, as most Brazilians would recommend, white rice, some kind of vegetable. I'm gonna cut up some of that beet that I cooked before. I did not toss it out like some people would do. Add it to my plate and I'll be back in a minute to give you a taste test. All right, so here's my plate. I got my white rice. I got some pork chop that I made here on the stove. Using my tempero pronto, of course, to season it. Got the beets that I cut up from the batch that we used making the beans. Got the beans itself. Look at that consistency. Yes, the way I like it. And I have a little bit of the juices from the pork poured onto the rice, or as we say in Brazil, caldo. And I also have myself a beverage. Unfortunately, I don't have any Monaco Shah on hand. And some of you are watching this saying, what the hell is Monaco Shah? If you can even pronounce it like I just did. And you'll find out in another video, I'm sure. All right, so let's give it a test. I mean, the whole thing looks great, but we're really talking about the beans. So I'm gonna try some of the beans straight first. First of all, the aroma 
it's actually making me salivate a little bit. A, because I'm hungry, and B, because it just smells amazing. Consistency, I like mine just a little bit, not too runny, a little thicker there. I don't wanna say clumpy, but it holds together well, like that, when you bring up a fork like this. That's the way I like my consistency. If you want yours runnier, you add more water at the time that you're mixing it after it's simmered for that time. Or if you want it drier, I don't know why you would, but hey, you do you. You don't add the water, you just allow it to dry out a little more. Taste test, first bite. Mm. Nice fragrant and kind of unami flavor from the mixture that we made with the paste and the scallions with cilantro. I've been doing this long enough that I know exactly how much salt I like in my beans, so obviously I'm pleased with the amount of salt I have. If you make it and you find that it's a little saltier than you care for, add a little less next time when you make the paste. If you make it bad and you find it's too salty, well that's what you have your rice for, right? You can just kind of go in, mix it a bit with the rice, which was, that was gonna be my next test anyway. Try it with some of the rice. Mm. If you made the rice the way I made in the previous video, it pairs really well with black beans because as I explained earlier in this video, this is a staple in Brazil. Just to point out, because I know some of you saw this recipe the first time in your life, you really cook it with beets, yes, you really cook it with beets, but unless you put an actual piece of beet into the beans, you're not gonna taste it, you don't taste it at all. But it does something to the skin, it makes it a little more tender, it's it a nice little snap, a little bit of a snap. I can tell you, I've made this with and without the beets because I was as skeptical as you were because I have American upbringing, of course, but I'm telling you, if you make it without the beets, it is not the same. One last thing before we wrap up here. I'm gonna take a piece of my pork chop here and a little bit of the bean on here. Let's make ourselves a nice hearty bite. And actually, you know what, what the hell, let's get a little bit of the rice on here too. I'm such a big fan of this style of rice. I'm such a big fan of how it pairs with the beans, all right? Here we go, close up on this here. Look at that, that's gonna be a beautiful bite right there. Mm-hmm. Da gostoso. Nossa senhora, que gostoso. That's what I would say if I was eating this in Brazil. Delicious. You basically have yourself here kind of a, almost a basic version of a prato feito, which is a topic for another video. <laughs> so that's it. That's my recipe for the beans. It is time consuming, but as you saw from my demonstration, it's really easy to make. If you can follow some simple instructions, you got it, pal. Pretty inexpensive meal, pretty tasty meal. And if you like me, if you have any of that upbringing where these beans were a part of it, it tastes like home. Thank you so much for watching Star Quality Kitchen. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and stalk. Laters. Mm. That's good. Didn't even touch my drink.